What I want to do now is look at the outward nature of our call. We're called into the wild, windy, and well-worn places. I love those words. And it's the most wonderful thing, and I know that Graham and Simon and Fenno will, will echo this, that when you get to pray that over each person, it is the most extra and Ray too, you've done so many first voyages. The, the privilege of praying that prayer over people, and those of you who are explorers have got yet that yet to come. <laughs> what a blessing. But it's also a little bit scary. You know, when you pray over somebody, God is leading you into wild and windy and well-worn places, and I think, oh, heck. <laughs> Who knows? So what I want to do, I'm always a little bit anxious about delving too deep into poetic words. But these words are good, and they will bear it. So let's go into, try and go into some wild windy, well-worn places. The wild places. When you're called out into wild places, the key thing is to go carefully. <laughs> Simon's laughing as, as somebody who goes out on the mountains. You do not rely on what you think you know, those wonderful words from Proverbs. <laughs> you go carefully, one step at a time. You look carefully where you place your feet. You listen to the wind. You listen to the, to, the, to the trees, you listen to the waves, you watch the winds, you watch the clouds, you watch, you listen, you go carefully. But here's an interesting thing. In these days, we've lo we're losing rapidly the ability to pay attention. It's a known thing. We're losing the ability to pay attention. I remember a couple of years ago talking about going home by a different route and wanting to think about how we learn to listen differently to each other and to the earth. We need to learn to pay attention because these devices are destroying our ability to pay attention. And they're designed to destroy our ability to pay attention. I'm not saying they're all wrong and evil, but we have to relearn paying attention. Now, the beautiful thing is that when you begin to pay attention to something, you begin to grow in wonder. <coughs> Isn't that a beautiful thing? When you begin to pay attention to somebody, you grow in wonder of that person. Those kids were about to be sent out onto the waves, okay, it is absolutely flat, calm and harmless. But they needed to pay attention to the surf instructor. Let's pay attention, listen, watch, and we begin to find wonder growing within us. Now, when you're out in the wild places, we discover the call to be a pioneer. I noticed that Scott it said yesterday, you know, do you know that you're all called to be pioneers? And there was this kind of nervous laughter. We're called to be pioneers because we're called out into the wild places. Who knows what those wild places are for you? Those places where you don't feel at home, those places where you feel discomfort. It doesn't mean you have to go out onto the wild moors and wild mountains and wild seas of these lands. It means you're called to go out into the places where you're not immediately comfortable. But called we are. But we must pay attention, otherwise we will cause harm and damage. We will wound ourselves by rushing in and overstretching ourselves. We will wound the land and the people around us. And have we not seen the effects of that? The effects of people relying on what they think they know and perhaps the amount of times we have done that when we've judged someone without knowing them. We've relied on what we think we know about them and then caused harm. We must learn to pay attention. Now here's a beautiful thing. As we pay attention 
and growing wonder, so we find love growing. But we also find that original intention within ourselves. Pay attention and we find that intention within ourselves to go out into the wild places, to bring healing, to bring restoration, to bring new vision. We live in wild times. Pioneers of faith are needed, but only those who will learn to pay attention. Practice, stop when you go out for a walk and look, listen. What do you hear on the wind? What do you hear in the birds? Be with the person you're listening to and listen and watch, grow in love. We live in wild times. We're called out to be pioneers. And we can be pioneers because God has called us and therefore the very essence of God, God's spirit, God presence is within us. We're called to be pioneers. Even entering into prayer is entering into a wild place. I think of praying for Gaza and Israel at a time like this. We enter a wild place. If we do not listen and pay attention, we barge in and keep our prejudices, our personal preferences, unaltered. And we miss the wonder and the love that God has. If we do not listen, if we do not pay attention, actually we endanger our own souls from satisfied, from self-satisfied prejudice and embedded opinions. We must pay attention in the wild places, even the places we're called to pray for. We're called by the presence of God within to be pioneers in the wild places. Pay attention, learn to pay attention, to grow in wonder. Go out and lead even without knowing it. We're called to the windy places. And as I reflected on this, the windy places to me became those places where you feel vulnerable and exposed. Those places where there is no shelter from the cold winds of the desert or the searing heat of the sun. Those wild places. And of course, in thinking about that, I was led to Jesus in the desert and that place of desolation, that place of hunger, of the sense of uselessness, the sense of lack of affirmation. <laughs> if you are the son of God, if, 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 those awful places that all of us will find ourselves in, because life happens at some stage or another, and the spirit called Jesus out into the desert, and the Spirit will call us into those places. Not a word from afar sending us disconnected from God, but God within us going with us into those windy places. There's a very big difference. We're not sent out there. Jesus went with the Spirit into that place. They're the places of doubt, hunger, pain, grief, anxiety. How will we make those into places of wonder and welcome? There is hope <coughs> in the midst of apparent hopelessness. And hope is not something we can manufacture. <coughs> we just have to be there, to be present in that place. and see what God will do. That's all we can do in those wild places. Jesus was present there. And we come with our empty hands 
into those wild places. I love that line in, in Mark's version of um, Jesus in the desert, where it says, and Jesus was with the wild animals. He didn't make them go away, he lived alongside them. Our dragon-taming Celtic saints understood this. How do we make them into places of wonder? How will they become places of wonder and welcome? Well, I think we will only have glimpses of this because they're desolate, hard places. Some of you have been there recently, some of you have been there a long time ago. I just, uh, as I was thinking about this, and I was thinking of two times came to mind. Well, I had a glimpse in a very dark desert place. I remember uh, we were grieving and I was in a hospital bed and the chaplain came and sat beside me and he was lost for words of sadness and despair, dismay. And in that moment, it was Jesus there sat on the bed beside me, lost for words. I didn't have to deny the grief and pretend that everything was okay. We didn't have to pretend anything, but God was present. God was with, the wild, with us, with the wild animals. And I remember another time sitting on the side, and again in hospital, sitting on the side of the bed rocking because I was in a lot of pain and the uh, medication wasn't doing anything, and rocking and rocking and rocking. But I knew that I didn't need to fight because I'd learnt enough that my body was suffering and to be kind. So I didn't fight, but I just rocked. But in that place, the nurse came and brought me a heat pad and there was an angel. There was an angel. God was present. I had a glimpse of God in that place. We're called to be present in the windy, exposed places. Not to deny them, but to be present. And then the well-worn places. These are the places where we're called to be prophets. The well-worn places, these are the places that we know well. The places we know from the inside. The places where we work, our churches, our homes, shopping places, traveling places. The places that we just take for granted. But I believe we're called to be prophetic in these places and we can't take these places for granted. These are the places where we're often on the inside because we know them well. A prophet who's constantly complaining will never be listened to. They'll just be a wittering prophet, a waste of space. We're called to pay attention and to love. We must work against our complacency in these places that we know so well. And perhaps become a little more edgy. Not in the sense of being anxious and prickly, but edgy in the, in the sense that we stand on the edge. Be on the edge of the inside. I often rage about church hierarchy. Often rage about church hierarchy because of people I see who are worn out, misunderstood, not listen to. But a while ago I sat with someone who's partner of a bishop and listened. And that story challenged me. Our complaining from the inside is often destructive. We're not called to be destructive, but to love. And when we love, then we may question and challenge. When we love, then we may question and challenge. Then we will be prophets. Then we will speak God's word in that place. The same, I believe, is, tr is true about our care for the earth. 
If we make life hell for those who try to lead, if we make hell for others by our defense of the earth, we are often destructive. But if we care and go carefully and love and care for the earth and care for those others who live on the earth, then our challenge will be heard and our challenge must be heard whether by word or by action, we're called to be prophetic in the well-worn places. We need to be on the inside, but on the edge. That is the prophet's place. Don't we see that in the, in the scriptures? Those prophets were on the inside, but on the edge. thing happened to me in preparing this because I discovered I've got three points all beginning with the same letter. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened before. <laughs> to be a pioneer in the wild places, to be present in the well-worn places, and to be prophetic. Sorry, to be present in the windy places and to be <coughs> prophetic in the well-worn places. God is calling us in these places. God is calling us, learning to love and challenge so that every place might be healed. That we might feel the call of the Spirit. That the Spirit will be present with us and that they will become places of wonder and welcome. God is present with us. God makes this great wave. God is giving us a vision of a spoiled creation being restored to harmony with its creator. Go and be a pioneer in the wild places, but to be a pioneer, just simply learn to pay attention. And then you will grow in love and find your call back to that original intention. God is calling us to see a fragmented world become whole. That call back to the ancient path that we know so well of a weakened church being restored to its mission, of lands being healed and lit by the glorious Trinity. God is present and we are called. <laughs>